Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with more psalms. Kinda, sorta. I actually don't have a particular psalm that I'm going to be talking about today. As I was getting ready for the little message, uh, and this is just a few minute, a few minute message one, a brief one, it just kind of occurred to me, why praise and worship? As you kind of saw in, in the title of this message, why praise and worship? I mean, I get the fact that it's important. I know experientially that when I go to do praise and worship, whether it's at church or at home, sometimes I literally feel God's presence. Um, the things that were occupying my mind, the things that were so important, sometimes disheartening, they just kind of disappear and go away. I remember how big God is, and I realize that everything's going to be okay in Him. just kind of cheers me up, puts me in a good mood. And I'm just kind of thinking to myself, why is that? Why does praise and worship, which the Psalms exemplify, why does it work? Why is that a thing? Why is music so important to God? I mean, we can look at the arts all day long and be like, you know, I like this, I don't like that. I like this um, either artist, composer, singer, guitarist, drummer, um, and anything else and say, and then go to the other side and say, well, I don't like this artist. I don't like this songwriter. I don't like this musician, this singer, this guitarist, this drummer. Anything in the arts is pretty subjective. And you could say, I like this style. I don't like this style. But why is praise and worship pretty much, which is pretty much in the form of music. The Psalms were written as a Psalter, as a praise and worship book. They were songs that you sang. Why is it that that's the way that God chooses to minister to us? Why is, why is praise and worship as important as it is? Um, Paul even went so far in, in Ephesians as to say, um, you know, sing to one another in spiritual hymns and songs, making melody um, in your heart to one another and to the Lord. Google that. Research. I, I, won't get, I know it's in Ephesians, but I won't give you the chapter and verse. I'll let you look that one up. Why is that? Why does it work? Why did God put that in place? Music seems to be such a subjective thing. Um, as far as liking and disliking, it's purely an aesthetic. But when it comes to religiously, spiritually, music directed at God is incredibly powerful. Even if you're not um, a musician, even if you're not good at singing or good at songwriting or good at playing an instrument, if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, if you praise and worship God with all of your heart and you mean it, other uh, humans may not like it very much, but there is something incredibly liberating about it. Something where God just comes down, He brings His presence, and I, there have even been times in my life, personally, and the lives of other people that I've known, personally, where it, it just, I can't really point to a reason. Like, things were bad in life. Some, they needed to clean up a few things. They needed to stop a few things. Some things weren't going very well. They were circumstances beyond what the person or I could control. And then just in a particular praise and worship setting, be it at home, be it at church, be it away at some Christian camp, it was a particular song or a particular music session where something clicked in our heads. And sometimes the circumstances, like when we go back to the circumstances after the praise and worship, things were just worked out. Things just, it's like the, the, the enemy and the people and the things that were against us just weren't against us anymore. There's something good and liberating about praise and worship. And so I, I don't have an army of verses. I know it's right and good to do. The biggest book in the Bible is the Psalter, the Psalms, 150 of them. The longest chapter in the Bible is Psalm 118, which is a giant song about the Word of God. So I know it's important. I know it's good. How and why it works, not really sure. Maybe that's, maybe that's, I'm not promising I'll do a 30-minute topic on, you know, this, that, or the other, but at the same time, this may very well be a 30-minute topic sometime in the future once I feel like I've got a little bit more to offer and put, and put forward and put on the table. Just right now, it's kind of a question, a curiosity question that I wanted to present to you guys and see what your experiences were. Would you echo my experiences? Some of you have experienced the presence of the Lord um, a deep peace, freedom from some personal bindings and from some circumstantial bindings after you had a praise and worship session. 
where you sang that one song that you really like and for some reason this time things just clicked, things just made sense, and things got better afterwards. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So yeah, I just wanted to put that out there to anyone who hasn't been involved in praise and worship and you're a believer, I would highly, strongly recommend you not just read the Psalms but make praise and worship a part of your daily routine. Just the sheer size of it in the Bible indicates the importance of it, in my opinion. And I know personally, and from other people around me, don't know exactly how or why. I could point to a few verses about God's presence and peace and joy coming down, but why, why isn't it just prayer or just Bible study? Why is praise and worship a part of that? Let me, get, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.